AFR On Demand is brought to you by Breck Golf. Try Beaver Creek today, just 20 minutes from downtown Baton Rouge in the Zachary area. They've got a PGA Tour driving range, a short game practice area, 30 to 40 yard practice shots. It's a great place to chip and putt and practice if you don't have time for a full round. Book your tee time today, golf.breck.org, golf.breck.org. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge studio. Let's rock! Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR, presented by Decision Critical, Concierge Nursing Service in Baton Rouge. I'm Matt. This is Jack O'Neill, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Yes, and Mr. Toby Tomlick. like you are as well get out there and make it a good one head to oxford oxford visit with neil mccrady here in about 15 minutes uh changing things up a bit talk some hoot out with mike triplett mike yeah new orleans saints coverage with some mad libs mixed in why don't you just uh, go by mike it's time to talk black and gold with mike triplett of new orleans dot football presented by benny's car wash family owned and operated since 1951 oh. Mike, we appreciate it as always. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me. As always, I uh, appreciate you being flexible with us here to make it work today. No, um, thank you for being <laughs> flexible. I'm happy to do it. Uh, speaking of being flexible, Saints had to be flexible at their quarterback position. Okay, uh, the decision to start Spencer Rattler. How do we feel? Uh, I mean, it's the right move uh, to get everyone excited about this game, I think. Um uh, Uh, And I think it's the right move for this team. What what struck me is if there were any other factors for deciding who deserves to be backup quarterback, if there's a pecking order, uh, if there's seniority, I don't know if any of those go into deciding who the number two quarterback is. This decision is about a team that needs to win a game. Um, And and they've got a week to game plan for it, and they're on a three-game losing streak. And they got to find a way to win one of these two games against Tampa Bay or Denver at home. Otherwise, the season might already be lost. So, you know, nothing else matters except for who gives them the best chance to win. And and that's why they're picking Spencer Rattler. So why didn't they go to Rattler when Carr got injured against Kansas City? Well, I mean, at that point, obviously, he wasn't even eligible to come into the game. I mean, they had they had chosen Hainer to be the number two. And, I mean... It's tough to say exactly what the difference is in those two situations. Um, heard someone suggest, you know, Hayner, Hayner could step in and complete the game plan that was already in place for Carr. Uh, Rattler's a guy you game plan around. I don't know that they're mm-hmm. that different, but that makes perfect sense. That was definitely true in the previous days of, of, of like when Taysom wasn't the backup on a game day. But, you know, maybe some of it, I don't know. I mean, there's obviously the conspiracy theories about not wanting Rattler, the fans all to be demanding Rattler come to the game at any moment. Look, there are, there are a million factors. I do think it was close enough between the two that I would not have been surprised by either decision at the beginning of the year, who they would go with as the number two. Um, I was not surprised that they went with Hainer. It didn't feel egregious or acrophrical, if that's the right word. Um, (laughs) Oh, man, we're going to add that to Mad Libs next time. But this one does not surprise me either because, you know, they they need some juice and and they they need a guy who can make some plays behind an offense that's kind of broken right now. Um, And and I don't think this will be too big for Rattler either. Okay, why does Rattler – you got to see both of these quarterbacks in training camp out in California, some in preseason games. Why does Rattler give the Saints the best opportunity to win this weekend? I mean, I think it's maybe too generic to say higher ceiling, more upside, those kind of buzzwords, but I think that's true of Rattler. 
Uh, I think there's some big playability. I think there's some mobility. I think there's a big arm. Uh, this isn't a caretaker situation. This is a game where you have to outscore the other team. You're going to be under duress. You're going to have to make plays. Um, and, and you know, there's also, you know, the long-term upside of this is the rookie quarterback you invested in. This coaching staff chose him. Um, you know, they want to see him. You know, there, there's a lot. He was exciting people with everything he did this summer uh, in training camp. And now here's a chance where, hey, we're going to put two game plans maybe more than two game plans together in a row. Uh, we're going to play to try to win some games, and let's see what we have in Spencer Rattler. It'll certainly help if he's got a full complement of weapons and a healthy-ish offensive line. Uh, yeah. I don't, it, it, I, that ish is carrying a lot of weight. There. Okay. I think I think it's going to look a lot like last time. If Caesar Ruiz isn't back, Eric McCoy isn't back. Uh, Lucas Patrick might not be back. I, I, healthy-ish? No. Terrible. Awful. <laughs> okay, as let's, bad as it's been. Let's. I want to dig into this a little more because they made the decision to start Lucas Patrick at center and Nick yeah. Saldaveri at left guard. Mid-game against the Chiefs, they were like, hey, Saldaveri, you stink. Get out of here. And they put Connor McGovern yeah. in at center and kicked Patrick over. Well, now Lucas Patrick hasn't practiced this week with a chest injury, which to the best of my knowledge, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, is a new injury. So what in the world do they do on the offensive line? You get Connor McGovern and Nick Saldaveri and Landon Young at right guard and Trevor Penning at right tackle oh and Tyler Fogg at left tackle. Um, is that the worst offensive possible, line you've ever Patrick. seen? Is that the worst offensive line you've ever seen with the Saints in all your years covering them? It has to be, yeah. With the Saints, yeah. yeah. There's no close second because they always had either a Jari Evans or a Teron Armstead or a Ryan Ramchick or Carl Nix or multiple. They've, yeah. It's never been anything like this. Nothing. No, n- never. What about that Monday it's night awful. game against Miami when every like when they started Ian Book? Okay, who, okay. I don't. I don't remember who was who were the offensive linemen that day. Like, I'm, I'm reaching point, here. But, I'm reaching here. But they were missing 22 guys or something that night, so it couldn't have been good. Mm. Um, you're right. Um, I do remember when they went to Pittsburgh a couple of years ago. Was that Sean Payton's last year? Was that? That was Dennis Allen's first year when they hit rock bottom with some offensive line injuries and they went to Pittsburgh and they couldn't even run the ball for a yard. That was the previous low, I think. <laughs> but it's a new low now. Uh, the only thing they have now is they have an offensive coordinator who's proven brilliant at covering up for that here and there. Um, but he's shown his limitations, too. There's some There's some magic tricks you can't pull off when you're facing... Chris Jones or Jalen Carter or third and nine or down by 10 or as was the case on Monday night, all of the above. I'm Mike Triplett's with us, New Orleans dot football. Uh, he's on Twitter at Mike Triplett. Of course, our conversation is brought to you by Benny's car wash. Um, and that wasn't a gotcha, Mike. It was just, it was more illustrating. Like you have to go to a global pandemic yeah. when you were missing 21 yeah. starters and your coaching staff uh, to find a line that was comparable to how bad yep. this one is. What, what about the complementary pieces? I know Alvin Kamara was back at practice on Thursday, which is good news. Yeah. What about the rest of the offensive weapons that could complement? Yeah, Richie Shaheed, uh, this should add some comfort that he expects to play and that he's just dealing with something minor. So everyone should be there. I don't know that every, except Taysom Hill. Um, I, so Alvin Alave, Shaheed, um, I, everyone hasn't been enough, though. I mean, um, if teams, when teams have taken away Olave and haven't given them time to throw the deep ball to Shahid, they don't have a ton of other answers. I mean, I like the two touchdowns they throw to Foster Moreau this year. I'd like to see more of that. Somebody has to be open when these other guys are being covered. Um, but I mean, uh, it all starts with sort of the basic tenets of generic football. Uh, but it's it's never been more true to the extreme than the Saints this year. I mean, they've got to be able to run the ball. They've got to let it be third and four. They've got to let play action work. I mean, in the two games this year where they haven't been able to run the ball and it's been second and long and third and long, you know, the, the magic has, has been erased. And uh, so that's that's where it starts is can they run the ball at all or, or pretend to run or threaten to run um, so that it's not just tee off on the rookie. Yeah. Um, it might have to be one of those and, games. And look, I will say this. They are facing. They're not facing the Chiefs this time. 
Yeah. They're not an arrowhead against the Chiefs. They're at home in the Superdome against the team that just like Kirk Cousins throw for 500 yards last week. So, yes. so it could get better. Is um, That's kind of where I was transitioning to next. Like, this might have to be one of those games like the Saints won in Tampa a few years ago when it was 9-9 nine and nine to nothing. Like, the defense could could make it much easier on the offense. Well, no, I, I, I don't think you can stop Tampa Bay from scoring. I, I think that's a good offense over there. I think uh, Baker Mayfield, I've got to admit, you know, I thought maybe there was a fluky nature to last year, and he's doubling down on it this year. They obviously have good receivers. Um, they're going to score points. I don't I don't think you can win this one 9 nothing or 16-13. I think you've got to find a way to score some points. What is the path for New Orleans if they're going to and I agree with you Mike like these next 2 weeks if you lose these next 2 and you're 2 and 5 I, there's just I don't see a a path to climb to realistically climb out of a 2 and 5 hole you got to get one of these so if it's this weekend what's yeah. the path The path to winning this weekend? Yeah. I mean yeah it's got to be it's got to be don't 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 do anything don't don't stack the deck against yourself anymore. I mean Funny, Joe Woods just said something today, and sometimes these things don't ring true when you're like, that was not a close game. He goes, he listed all the things they did wrong. You know, we missed these tackles, we made these errors, we did this, it's not unchar- you know, which is uncharacteristic for us. We gave this up, and after three quarters, it was 16 to 13. You know, and I'm like, that it, it is true. You can, you can be the worst team, and, and, and the other team can be better, and you can fight hard and keep games close. But then what you can't do is you can't give up a 65-yard run to uh, Saquon Barkley and a 61-yard catch to uh, Dallas Goddard. You can't get a 50-yard pass interference penalty and a 50-yard pass to Juju Smith-Schuster. And you can't give up a 30-yard pass interference penalty and have Rashid Shaheed drop a punt in the end zone. Like they, they've got to win. They've got to win the big game-changing play advantage. And, it, and in each of their three losses, they they lost they lost those big times. Got to find a way to scratch one out, see if they can do it this weekend. You can read about it over at neworleans.football. He's Mike Triplett on Twitter at Mike Triplett. Been good enough to join us here Thursdays for years now. And our our chats each week are brought to you by Benny's Car Wash, bennyscarwash.com. Find out about all the Benny's memberships. That's the best, like, 15 or 16 bucks a month you'll spend on limited car washes, bennyscarwash.com. Mike, we appreciate it as always, man. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Be well. It is after further review. We're glad you're hanging out with us here. Thursday shows are presented by... Decision Critical, decisioncriticalbr.com, a concierge nursing service. Uh, I'm going to enjoy a lot being able to tell you about Decision Critical over the the, the weeks and months. Um, Blazier Rivette, their their founder, CEO, was a was a CV nurse when our son Drew was a baby when we took him home, and, and Blazier helped care for Drew when he was a baby. And she started this company, and it's all concierge nursing. They come into your home. Um, they can go sit with your loved one in a hospital if that's what it need be. Whatever concierge nursing care you may need from from birth to end of life or anything in between. And it is, I think so many people immediately think, oh, I couldn't afford that. You need to reach out and have a conversation with them. Uh, everyone deserves amazing care. Every nurse is handpicked by Blasia. You have to learn more about them. DecisionCriticalBR.com. All right, Neil McCready, Rebel Grove, joins us next. Talk a little LSU Ole Miss from the other sideline. It's AFR. After further review. Low resources, they are complete employer solutions. If you are hiring and having trouble finding the right people. Like maybe you hire people and once you once you hire them, you realize, God, we we made a mistake. They're not on time. They're they're not reliable. They're not dependable. They can't physically do the job we need. Whatever the case may be, so many of those issues can be uncovered during the interview process. It's one of the things about Glow Resources that makes them so good at what they do. They'll do 50 interviews a day, roughly 15 thousand interviews over the course of a year. They are experts at knowing the right questions to ask and what to look for to vet the people for your job. It's Glow Resources. Check them out online. G-L-O, glowresources.com. They specialize in skilled blue collar labor, but they also have their professional placement division for any white collar job. G-L-O, glowresources.com. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Decision Critical Concierge Nursing. Healthcare for your lifestyle. Learn more at decisioncriticalbr.com. The Tigers are on the hunt. Let's head behind enemy lines to preview this week's matchup. Tigers and Rebels. 
top 10 team coming into Baton Rouge this weekend. You can feel the juice already around town. It's pretty awesome. It's going to be a great night in uh, Tiger Stadium. Neil McCready, Rebel Grove, good enough to join us on the show. Talk a little bit about the Rebs. Hey, man, how are you? Matt, I'm good. It's good to be with you. How are you? Awesome. We always appreciate the time, man. Quite honestly, it's uh, it, it's it stinks that we're here already in in October and we're only now going to have a, a night game in Tiger Stadium that people are actually going to be excited about, but we'll take it. Um, give me a sense of where the, the sort of temperature is with this Ole Miss team after the hot start, the really very surprising loss to Kentucky, and then you know, last week coming into Baton Rouge. Yeah, um, probably as I told you back in July when we talked, I mean, there's never been more hype or expectations around the team, and then more importantly, inside a team at Ole Miss probably in, I don't know, long before. I'm not a historian. This is my 17th year on the beat. It's not even close. This is the most, this is the the, high, the loftiest expectations inside a program here and in, in all the time I've been here. Their goal is to win the national championship. Now, I, I didn't say they're going to, for everybody goes crazy. That's their goal. Mm. Um, it, they, didn't, they didn't ever run from it. Um, and they looked phenomenal in the first four weeks, but they beat four teams that all sucked. And none of those teams would, were ever going to do anything against anybody in the SEC. No, nobody. So those four teams combined, had they played a 16-game SEC schedule, they would have gone, man, I mean, maybe one in 63. Maybe somebody pulls off a miracle. I mean, but that's it. Um, so they get to Kentucky, and Kentucky had been tested. Kentucky had played South Carolina. Kentucky had played Georgia. And it was the first time they got punched in the face. And they just didn't handle it super great. Now, they – you go and you look at the statistics in that game, and you know Ole Miss had about two yards per play more than Kentucky, but they had a hard time getting Kentucky off the field. Uh, Mark Stoops and them had a great plan; they executed the plan, and the game got close. And you know uh, Kentucky converted a fourth and seven from their own eighteen and made a big play. Vandegrift made a terrific throw, and Barry and Brown, who's an absolute you know speed merchant. Uh, got open, made a catch. They they converted it, made a touchdown. Then they got you know they stopped them and Ole Miss missed a field goal that would have sent the game to overtime. And uh, it was over. And to answer your question, they were heartbroken. They were uh, they were kind of devastated. Really, I think it was a a brutally dif- difficult loss for them to absorb. But uh, they they came back last week and and uh, went to South Carolina and, and really dominated that game on the road from start to finish and set up what I think is, man, I mean, if you told me this was a college football playoff play-in game, I kind of buy it, uh, especially for, um, I mean, they both teams really, but, but the one that I cover, Ole Miss, I mean, I can make that argument really easy. Yeah, you hang a second L here and you still got Georgia ahead. It's, it's easy to see how the path would, uh, would not be very clear uh, for Ole yeah. Miss if you lose this game. So which is the real Ole Miss? Is it the team that – that got out physical by Kentucky, or is it the really good offense we saw in that first month? Oh, so offensively, I have some questions, you know, because they've 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 not been electric in these two SEC games. Um, they've left points on the board. Receivers have been open, and Jackson Dart hasn't hit them. Um, he's missed some reads. I don't think he's been super sharp in these two games. They've not. They don't have so far the kind of occasionally dominant running game that they had a year ago. They've been banged up up front. Um, the jury's out on them offensively. Now, Matt, I don't think the jury's out on them defensively. I think this is especially up front an elite defense, which is hard to say about Ole Miss because just a couple of years ago, they were horrible on, on defense and they couldn't stop anybody and brought Pete Golding in and they've given him full authority and autonomy on the defensive side of the ball. And, and he is, done a great job. They, they did a tremendous job in the portal with some key additions, and, and they're significantly better on defense. They're really good there. Um, it, you know, but to answer your question about offense, I mean, I'm, jury's out. I lean to it's still an electric offense that's going to score a bunch of points, but the last two weeks have shaken that confidence a little bit. Neil McCready, rebelgrove.com, talking Rebs. Uh, you can get him at Neil McCready on Twitter. X Is Trey Harris going to play? I believe so, yes. And the fact that I believe that he is, uh, based on what I've heard, is it indicates to me that he got lucky and the injury wasn't anywhere near as serious as it probably could have been if you kind of watched the replay of that play. So, And he's 
listen, he's the stir that serves the he's the straw that serves the drink on that on that offense. But he is, I think he's a bit of a cheat code. He and he and Dart have such a connection. He's already caught fifty two passes. Uh, the next leading receiver receiver on Ole Miss's team has nineteen. Uh, that's um, Caden Lee, the slot receiver. So I mean, Jackson Dart. Loves throwing the ball to Trey Harris. The offense is, in many ways, built around throwing the ball to Trey Harris. And, um, you know, it's what Lane does well throughout his career at USC, at, at Alabama, at FAU, and now at Ole Miss. Is, is, he's not afraid to feed, um, you know, one guy. And so if, if Harris couldn't play, I was going to say, and I, don't, I just don't know. I don't know what this looks like. But if Harris can go and he's effective, I think he's – He's obviously someone that that LSU is going to worry about and have to spend a lot of time thinking about. What if he's What if he's limited? Let's say you get you know seventy five percent Trey Harris. Some other guys are going to have to step up. That's the case. I mean, if that's the deal, Juice Wells will have to step up. They're going to have to get more out of their tight ends. They'll have to get more out of Caden Lee, more out of Jordan Watkins. They have other weapons, but look, I mean, there's nowhere around this. You know, you've 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 been covering LSU for a long time when you have an elite wide receiver and I do think Trey Harris is an elite wide receiver yes. when you have an elite wide receiver and you take him out of the lineup your offense is not as good as it was with him in it I mean you you don't lose Jamar Chase out of the lineup and be like oh yeah we're good or you know or Malik Neighbors or whatever you lose those kinds of receivers and and you're, you're going to take a step back so if he's not close to a hundred percent their offense their offense will have to find production elsewhere uh what about the running game with uh, Parrish? Look, Parrish, Henry Parrish is averaging six yards a carry. Um, does it look different whenever you're you're playing SEC defenses as opposed to that first month? Um, yeah, it's been down a little bit, but I thought he's held his own. I thought he was okay against Kentucky. I thought he was okay against South Carolina. The the big span story here has been Ulysses Bentley the fourth, the fourth who was sort of the change of pace back last year and ran for about 600 yards. He really hasn't played, and nobody really knows why. We ask Lane, and we get really vague answers. Uh, Matt Jones has been the backup. He got banged up in the last couple of minutes at South Carolina. It was listed as doubtful on Lane's uh, novel length, uh, length um, <laughs> injury report yesterday. I don't necessarily know what to think of that. In the event that Jones is indeed doubtful, I think you'll see more of Bentley and uh, the fans have certainly been clamoring for that. They look. You and I talked about this in the summer. They two things can be true at once. You can be glad to be rid of the pain in the ass that sometimes was Quinshawn Judkins, and you can also really miss the quality running back that Quinshawn Judkins was at Ole Miss. And I think both of those things are true. Yeah. Um, is a guy or a position for Saturday that we're not talking about that we should be? So I think this game comes down to elite units. Um, I think LSU's offensive line is terrific. Great players. I think Ole Miss's defensive line is terrific. Great players. I think this thing comes down to the obvious, right? Can LSU run the ball effectively enough to have third and manageable? Because if you have third and manageable, you can't tee off, tee off after the quarterback. But for the sake of our little discussion, let's say that LSU doesn't have a tremendous amount of success running the football. If they do, they're going to win. Obviously, let's say they let's say they they have a, a a mediocre running game, and this thing has some third and sevens, some third and eights. Kentucky was able to convert those plays. They were able to to, to move the chains. To me, this thing's going to come down to LSU's ability to block what I think is a very explosive defensive line, especially on passing downs, where everybody knows, hey, you're going to have to throw the football here. LSU hasn't allowed anyone to get to Nussmeyer. Ole Miss has pretty much gotten every quarterback they've gone after this year. So I want to see how that shakes out. A guy to watch, he doesn't get talked about much because people talk about Prince William on Mielin and they talk about Walter Nolan, but Santaron Perkins was the reigning defensive player of the week in the SEC. He was terrific against South Carolina. He was really good against Kentucky as well. Um, he's a guy that's really beginning to emerge. He reminds a lot of people of Harold Perkins that first year at LSU where they just sort of let him get after the quarterback. And uh, Sunter and Perkins has done the same thing at Ole Miss and has been really effective. I mean, he, is, he has been a menace in the backfield, super athletic kid, can chase people down, is a problem for, for offensive tackles, especially in these downs where you know he gets to just pin his ears back and go. Got a couple more. Um... 
What about the Ole Miss offensive line that's that's had some injuries? LSU's defensive front, at least you know, causing pressure, has been pretty good this year. How does Ole Miss's offensive line look? They've been banged up. They just can't get healthy. and They're not going to have Jaden Williams, their starting left tackle, on, on Saturday. He's out for at least another couple of weeks. Uh, a couple of their interior guys, Caleb Warren, really hasn't played much. Um, Jeremy James, who's started at Ole Miss forever, um, really hasn't played much, has a hand injury. He was listed as doubtful on the report on Wednesday night. So, I mean, they're, they thought going into the season that that was going to be a strength. So far, it hasn't been a weakness, but it hasn't been a strength. They haven't dominated anybody. They held their own against South Carolina. That's pretty good pass rush they have at, at, at most of the time. I and mean, they got beat some. But like I said, they haven't been able to establish that running game. They've yet to prove that so far on a down where, hey, you just need to go get a yard or two, and by God, we're going to run it. They've yet to prove that they can consistently go get those yards. Now, I think they're going to run Jackson Dart more Saturday. I think they've intentionally kept that off the menu a little bit for a number of reasons. Mm. I think they'll have to use him as a runner against LSU some if they're, if they're going to have the kind of run game success that really Lane Kiffin's offense is built around. This series historically has had uh, quite a few notable special teams plays in it, to say the very least. Um, how are the Rebs on special teams? They punted the ball really well. Um, Caden Davis had a big miss in that Kentucky game. Yeah. You know, it's not fair to pin a game, pin one game on a kicker. That's stupid. No one's doing that. But that was a kick that, you know, I think they thought he would make, that they thought he should make, and they probably would have felt pretty good about things in overtime, but he didn't make it. Um, you know, and like anybody else, man, I mean, nobody's returning the ball anymore. Everybody kicks the ball out of the end zone. They've got Micah Davis, Utah State transfer portal guy, returning punts, and he's he's shown some – He's had a few where he was looked like he was close to breaking one. I'm not saying he's going to do that this weekend at all, but they're they're to answer your question, they're pretty solid in the kicking game. All right, last thing: um, Ole Miss wins Saturday if fill in the blank. Yeah, it, it's you 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 have to you have to get ahead in Tiger Stadium. I've been to that stadium so many times. I'm a Louisiana boy. I've covered other teams at LSU. You've you've got to get ahead of them. You can't let on a night on a night game where they're celebrating the hundred year anniversary and all that stuff. You 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 just can't you can't let the fans start becoming a major factor in that thing because it'll take it will impact your offense. They can't get rattled. I don't think this team will get rattled. This is a pretty veteran, older team that's been together for a while. I know it's famous last words for a team right before they go into LSU, but I'd be really surprised <laughs> if this one got rattled. But um, you know, you're, you're, if you can't run the football and get a, and stay ahead of the chains, you run the risk of that crowd becoming a major factor in that game late. They're great at it. It's one of the greatest atmospheres in all of college football. And so I think the key thing for them is their tempo has to work. They have to be able to run the ball effectively to a degree. And when they have scoring opportunities, they have to score because it's like any other fan base. This isn't a knock on LSU, their fans, or anyone else. But if you maintain a you know a ten point lead sort of throughout a game, the the fans aren't the factor that they can be if they start to smell the blood. Neil McCready, RebelGrove dot com. Get him on Twitter at Neil McCready. Hey man, uh, enjoy the game Saturday. We always appreciate the time. Thank you, Matt. Always good to talk to you. Thanks. Be well. It's after further review. Lee Sterling is best bets coming up in 15 minutes. Stay here at AFR. After further review. Right about the Watermark Hotel, the Renaissance Hotel, Watermark Downtown, Renaissance Southtown. You better believe it is going to be buzzing at both. The Watermark Downtown has become such a hub for people going to Tiger Stadium because of the proximity to LSU's campus. Look, I mean, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that they're at capacity right now for this weekend. But you got friends, family coming in. Uh, for future home games, tell them to look up the Watermark downtown, a great place to stay. And then, of course, you know where the Tigers will be on Friday. Uh, LSU, the uh, entire football program moves into the Renaissance Hotel. It's our home away from home. The night before LSU home games is the Renaissance Hotel. It's big enough to host the entire team and also all of their meetings. The, the team meals, the individual position group meetings, all of it there. 
they'll they'll manipulate that space in that sprawling hotel to make sure that they have everything you need for your next event. It's at the Renaissance Hotel. Watermark downtown, Renaissance Southtown on Blue Bonnet. Uh, Blue Bonnet, the Watermark Hotel. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Decision Critical Concierge Nursing. Healthcare for your lifestyle. Learn more at decisioncriticalbr.com. We all know Jaden Daniels had a pretty hot start to his NFL career. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are making Lamar Jackson comps, and rightfully so. I mean, Lamar's won two MVPs, and he's a dynamic thrower of the football, but also the, the big differentiator is Lamar's a 1,000-yard rusher in the NFL. But Jaden Daniels isn't too keen on that comp. You can go out there and just appreciate each individual for who they are. So I don't like when people really like try to compare me to Lamar and vice versa. Uh, you know, we're two different players. Um, and just go out there, just, uh, you know, just appreciate what the uh, quarterback play is being played. So that's what I try to do is just appreciate everybody for who they are. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I get it. It's also worth mentioning that as a rookie, Lamar Jackson played in 16 games. He only had 170 pass attempts, though. So he wasn't a full-time starter as a rookie. And he, and he ran for 695. So Lamar as a rookie counted for 11 touchdowns. Okay, so let me write this down just to make sure I have all this right. So Lamar, as a rookie, accounted for 11 total touchdowns and threw... For 1,201 yards. And by taking a look at Jaden Daniels' statistics through five games, it's a little bit better than that. Actually. Just a little? I mean, dude, it's so ridiculous. Um, he's already accounted for eight touchdowns. Four passing, four rushing. Remember, Lamar through 16 games had 11. Lamar, as a rookie, threw for 1,201 yards. Jaden threw five games, just thrown for 1,135 yards. So uh, I don't blame Jaden for not liking the Lamar comparison. He's actually better as a rookie than Lamar was. I'm not telling you Jaden Daniels is going to go be a multi-time MVP. Uh, maybe he will. I certainly think he's he's capable. He has transitioned seamlessly to the NFL. And... The NFL is a relentless, unforgiving machine, and it will swallow you whole. And great defensive coordinators and defensive players adjust and continue to adjust, and they will the more they get tape on Jaden Daniels. I'll remind you, RG3 was the NFL Rookie of the Year. That didn't end so great for RG3. Uh, Vince Young was the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Didn't end so great for him as well. There's players who have great starts to their career that don't that aren't able to maintain as the league adjusts to them. So it's how do you keep counterpunching? But boy, Jaden sure seems like he's got that in him. Uh, we're pulling for him. The, uh, as the uh, the commanders continue to plot forward here in year one, four and one under Jaden Daniels. And they'll play, by the way, at the Ravens. That's why the Lamar Jackson stuff comes up. Jaden and the and the commanders are at the Ravens coming up this weekend noon uh, on CBS. We're brought to you by Supper Club. Hey, if you're looking for dinner plans, remember Supper Club's about to open Thursdays, y'all. Remember, make Thursdays your Supper Club spot. This is a one-day only special that they're doing at Supper Club. One day only. On Thursday night, it's prime rib night at Supper Club. Chef Layton takes a 21-day dry-aged, bone-in tomahawk ribeye, serves it up as prime rib. Last week, I think he had seven of them total. So this is a super limited item only on Thursdays. Y'all, if you've not been to Supper Club, if you've not experienced Supper Club, or you've been, but you haven't had the prime rib, you've been, you're always looking to try something new. Thursdays at Supper Club. And on top of the prime rib, remember, every single Thursday over at Supper Club, they're going to do their exquisite wine feature. Look, every week, it'll be a different wine that they're going to serve by the ounce. Their finest wines poured by the ounce. Tonight, it's a 2011 Chateau Haubrion. The menu price is four thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars. That's what a bottle of that of of that wine costs. They're serving it for sixty dollars an ounce. So something that you may otherwise never have the opportunity to try, you can try affordably at Supper Club every Thursday. Make sure if it's even if it's not tonight, I mean go tonight. But if it can't be tonight, next Thursday. 
Get a reservation now for Thursday nights at Supper Club. SupperClubBTR.com. Um, we are going to get Lee Sterling here in just a bit. We get Lee's best bets. Forgive me. We just kind of shuffled our lineup a little bit. Um, Mike Triplett had a, a, uh, an obligation in the 5 o'clock hour, so he joined us earlier in this hour. So we're just moving things around a little bit here today, uh, at, a, a typically. So we are going to get to what to watch, which we normally do here after the top of the hour, just for those who are expecting things you know, normally in their place. So we'll get to all that uh, coming up. It is Thursday Night Football tonight. Lee Sterling will give us a pick and a thought on Thursday Night Football here tonight with an NFC West battle. You have the Seahawks against the, uh, the 49ers. We'll get to that with Lee Sterling next. It's AFR. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys. Get Gordon and get it done. GetGordon.com. GetGordon.com. If you've been injured in an accident and it's not your fault, do what injured people in our state have done for years. Get Gordon and get it done. Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, of course, always love telling you about the charitable arm as well. It's Gordon Gives. When you uh, when you think about Gordon, yes, of course, you always think about um Radio spots and billboards and all that sort of stuff, which and he likes to have a lot of fun with the NIL deals that he's done and everything. But my goodness, when you look at the amount of ways that Gordon has given back to the communities, um, if it's stepping up for diabetes, if it's stuff the bus, if it's uh, memorial funds, student scholarships, uh, athletics programs, they're always so involved. Uh, they are Gordon McKernan injury attorneys, and Gordon loves to to give back. It's just a key component of what they do. Great, great people. Get Gordon and get it done. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Decision Critical Concierge Nursing. Healthcare for your lifestyle. Learn more at decisioncriticalbr.com. Place your bets, gentlemen. It's time to head to the window. Don't gamble it all in one place. This is Lee Sterling's Best Bets, brought to you by Paramount Sports. How about Lee Sterling? Past couple of weeks, 14 and four over the last two weekends. A couple of 45 unit plays as well, and they smashed them. Uh, 68 and 24 lifetime on those 45 unit plays. Uh, great stuff from Lee and the gang over there at Paramount Sports. Joins us now, Lee. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Lucky uh, the hurricane didn't hit us. Only we only hit probably I think like 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. So. Uh... We fared okay, but you got to feel for the people. Yeah. I mean, you've been through it. <laughs> I lost a home in 92 to Hurricane Andrew, so 3 million people without power and a lot, a lot of homes uh, uh, were destroyed or damaged, so uh, not easy. Yeah, man. Um, nothing really to add. Just uh, no. certainly prayers and whatever support we can lend. Uh, everybody in these communities understands that. Yep. Uh, football will be a good distraction this weekend. Sure. How about Alabama falling to Vandy last week? Now they're at home against South Carolina. It's a big number at 21, Lee. Uh, let down spot, Bama feeling sorry, or big bounce back? I don't think it's going to be a letdown. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me, I don't think these practices are going to be easy. They, um, It was a combination. They didn't play well. Vanderbilt is a tough team to prepare for. They do a lot of different options, a lot of different blocking schemes you don't see from most teams, very sophisticated. And I even wrote when I started watching that Missouri game, I think it was like mid-second quarter, I'm like, this team is is no joke. They're unlike any other Vandy team we've seen in a long time. So Vandy's looking to seek redemption after allowing 34 and 33 points on back-to-back Saturdays. I'm going to make this prediction, too. I don't think Lenore Sellers, who's going to start for South Carolina, is going to be a quarterback this time next year. I think they'll move him to a tight end, running back, maybe outside linebacker, some type of other position. I, I just don't think this is uh, the right kid for their team going forward. I mean, he's not even completing close to 60% of his passes, only has two touchdowns here. Uh, they, they've, they've been sacked, the quarterbacks, 22 times already this year. There is no data, you know, uh, on this coaching staff after a loss, but Nick Saban's final 10 years, he was 8-0 straight up after a loss. Average margin of win was 23.3 points. I think there's some kids still that have a lot of pride. I like Bama here. I think they pull away late 40-15. to 15. Red River rivalry. This one's always close. Yet You look at a two-touchdown line, I go, man, Oklahoma's kind of tasty yeah. there. What do you think? 
So I did it first, and and I've been to many of these games growing up. My uncle was a scout for the Cowboys and uh, had tickets right on the 50s. He used to joke that one side of of my derriere was on the uh, one side of the field and one was on the other. Yeah. But, um, I mean, this is, if, if, if someone hasn't gone to one of these, you've got to go. And what's even better now with a 2.30 start, you know, eating a Fletcher's corny dog at like 10, 11 in the morning, not as good. But <laughs> uh, you've had them before? No, man. I never eat a freaking corn dog, man. The best corn dogs you ever have. Uh, that's an, when you see the line, dog, oxymoron in my, in, my, uh, <laughs> in my life, Lee. Okay. All right. So I'm not <laughs> normally a corn dog eater, but... They are tasty. So we've seen some crazy stuff. We've seen some upsets. We've seen some blowouts. Texas dominated the line of scrimmage and had over 500-plus yards last year. Why did they lose? Minus three in turnover ratio. Quinn Ewers threw two key interceptions in that game, but he still threw for 371 yards. I don't know if I want a true freshman quarterback like Michael Hawkins playing uh, for a team I'm going to back here. This is a tough game to handicap, but I just think Texas is just better. They've improved running the football and stopping the run here. And if OU's defense is on the field for 35, 38 minutes, I think they're in trouble. I like Texas 35-14. One more college game. It's yeah. one here in Baton Rouge. LSU is going to host Ole Miss. Weird seeing LSU as a home underdog in this yeah. game. Uh Lee kind of feels like a lot of sharps are kind of leaning toward the Tigers and the points. What about you? So you look at the stat that they're four one and one as home dogs since 2021, and the fact that they're coming off a buy, it would look like you buy on here. And and I still don't think Ole Miss is going to go the whole season unscathed, but I think they have some advantages here. Why LSU still can't run the ball real well under 135 rushing yards versus the three power five teams this year they played. And now we know South Carolina is not a good team, and they allow 243 rushing yards. So this loss that Ole Miss had a couple weeks ago might have done them some good sometimes. You pull together as a team here. Garrett Nussmeyer, I think he's good. I think he's he's a capable replacement for Jaden Daniels. Still has not won the big game. His biggest wins so far are Purdue, Wisconsin, uh, in bowl games, and also South Carolina. I'm hearing Trey Harris well playing the game. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, I like Ole Miss 35-28. 35-28, Ole Miss by a touchdown. Um, hey, but we got a couple of NFL uh, picks. Right. Before we do that, let's remind people about the phone number. We've got about, about yep. two and a half minutes left. Remind yep. people about how they get Paramount Sports. Well, you, you can call me here. At the office, 800-400-9741. Again, the number 800-400-9741 to speak to me personally. And uh, we'll even give them a free game, uh, Tennessee and Florida, if they call. And uh, they want to hop on board, go to ParamountSports.com. Normally, you've got to be a monthly or season subscriber to get my 40 to 50 unit max wagers, who were 68 and 24 <laughs> lifetime. 74%. It's documented. You go on the website, see every game I've given my clients the last five years. You can get five for 55 either Saturday or Sunday, five for 55, and it will include a 40 to 50 unit max wager at ParamountSports.com. 800 400 9741. 800 400 9741. All right, two minutes. Uh, Detroit, yep. Dallas. Lions are a uh, three-point favorite in this one. I think everybody listening to us right now is probably pulling for Detroit. What do you think? (laughs) So here's the deal with Detroit. First couple games of the year, they had to play teams that they knocked out of the playoffs. Now they get to get a little bit of revenge. Uh, Dallas beat them late last year, and they're coming off a bye as Detroit. In that game last year, C.D. Lamb exploded for 227 receiving yards. I think the Detroit pass defense is much improved this year through free agency. And I think they just have too many weapons for Dallas. Everyone plays a team after they lose their key weapons, the two guys, the two best pass rushers, like last week. Best way to play it, the second week. Mm. I like Detroit big, 31-13. Wow, okay. Yep. What yep. do you make of the Saints with uh, Spencer Rattler? How do we begin to handicap this game? Well, why do you think they went with Rattler? I, I, I would have gone with Hayner here. Uh, better athlete, higher upside. Probably want to see what okay. they have with him, too. Okay, well, I, I see that. I just think the experience factor. I think Jake Hayner's experience and being in the system longer, I think, might be the difference. So 
I hope it goes well for him. I'm not a Tampa Bay fan, so uh, I just think here's the problem. You need to throw the football to have success against Tampa Bay. Atlanta did it uh, 59 times. Yeah. I think they're going to run the football, and they did it the first two weeks for 180, 190 yards, led them to wins here. I, I, I just think they're going up against a tough animal, uh, Tampa Bay, which left early, and it's not going to disrupt every week. I like Tampa Bay 24-13. Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com. Make sure you call that number, 800-400-9741, 800-400-9741. Lee picks against LSU and against the Saints. Boo this man. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, better days ahead. I hope you're all yep. on both accounts. We'll wait and see this weekend, man. Me too. I'll take a three and two. All right. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. You're the best. Lee Sterling, we appreciate his time, ParamountSports.com. Hey, our Thursday shows are brought to you by Decision Critical, DecisionCriticalBR.com. It's concierge nursing, healthcare for your lifestyle. They'll come into your home. These nurses are handpicked by their founder, CEO, Blazer Rivet, who has, I've told you before, has cared personally for my son, Drew, when she was a CV nurse. Uh, cannot recommend them highly enough. Check it out, decisioncriticalbr.com. Okay, y'all, hour number three. What to watch next? AFR. Michelle Weighing and Measurement, Michelle.com, Michelle.com. Check them out on the website. Michelle.com, M I C H E L L I at Michelle. They like to say, We show the world what measurement can do. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. If you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products you use to weigh and measure. Start at the website, use that as a resource. You can learn about, for example, the TRAC system. TRAC is an ac acronym TRAC Records, Assets, and Calibrations, T R A C. Their TRAC system is a free service to all Michelle customers, all their clients. And it gives you 24-7, 365 access to all of your calibration certificates. So let's say hypothetically you get audited. You can go right into that track system and find the, uh, the, uh, the calibration certificate, the date, down to the technician who calibrated that device for you. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Since 19, or for more than 75 years, uh, and still locally owned and operated as they've grown. Michelle.com.